Hey everyone, and welcome back to Clinical Physio with me, Khalid Maidan. Today's episode is the first in our anatomy series and is all about the main ligaments of the knee joint. First, let's examine the cruciates. We have the anterior cruciate ligament and the posterior cruciate ligament. The way of remembering which one is which is based on where they insert into, i.e. the anterior cruciate ligament inserts into the anterior surface of the tibia and the posterior cruciate ligament inserts into the posterior surface of the tibia. They overlap each other in an X shape and run through the centre of the knee joint. Now in terms of the function of these ligaments, you may have heard us in our quick fire Q&A of the knee joint talk about the three anteriors. The anterior cruciate ligament inserts into the anterior surface of the tibia and prevents anterior translation of the tibia in relation to the femur. The exact opposite is true for the posterior cruciate ligament. One of the most common ways of injuring your anterior cruciate ligament is when a person encounters a quick change in directional force, where the foot and lower leg become fixed in a medially rotated position, perhaps through a football tackle, or when turning when the studs get caught in the ground, whilst the body rotates laterally. Textbooks otherwise describe that ACL injuries most commonly occur as a result of jumping and landing, sudden pivoting, and sudden deceleration mechanisms. If you want to assess an ACL injury, you can use the anterior draw test or a Lachman's test. The posterior cruciate ligament is often injured when you have an anterior to posterior, or AP, force to the knee when it is in a flex position, for example during a car accident with a frontal impact, or perhaps a sports injury where a person is tackled from in front but the body falls forwards. The posterior sag sign test is a common way of investigating the integrity of the PCL, as well as the posterior draw test. Top tip, always look out for your posterior sag sign. If you don't, you may think you have found an ACL tear, thinking that the excess movement on your anterior draw test is from bringing the tibia from a neutral position to an excessively anterior position, when actually you have a positive PCL tear, and the excess movement comes from the anterior drawing of the tibia from the posterior sag position to the neutral position. Next onto the collateral ligaments. We have the medial or tibial collateral ligament, which originates from the medial femoral epicondyle and inserts into the proximal medial tibia, and we have the lateral or fibular collateral ligament, which originates from the lateroposterior femoral epicondyle and inserts into the anterior point of the head of fibula. The major role of the MCL is to resist valgus stresses or forces to the knee, whilst the major role of the LCL is to resist varus stresses or forces to the knee. These ligaments are commonly injured when there is a sideways force impacting from the opposite side of the knee. For example, as you can see here, the medial collateral ligament is often injured when there is an impact of force from the lateral side. It is important to also note that the MCL is often injured as a part of twisting mechanisms that also influence the ACL. The term unhappy triad, terrible triad, or O'Donoghue's triad, relates to a lateral blow to the knee, which causes a partial or complete rupture of the ACL, the MCL, and the medial meniscus. For testing the collateral ligaments, use the varus stress test to assess the integrity of the LCL, and use the valgus stress test to assess the integrity of the MCL. And that's all from me. Thank you as always for listening, and for more videos to help your anatomy or clinical revision, follow us on Facebook, subscribe to our YouTube channel, and keep watching Clinical Physio.